From the very first moment the new generation of Formula One cars took to the track, there has been one big talking point, porpoising. And this has nothing to do with aquatic life. It's actually an aerodynamic induced oscillation that the cars experience going down straight. Well, at least some of the cars. This bouncing or hopping that the cars experience has been a bit of a cause of concern, which has been growing as the season progresses. And at the Canadian Grand Prix, very much in the wake of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, when a number of drivers complained about the severity of the bouncing of their cars, the FAI decided to step in and take action. In order to deal with this phenomenon, the FIA have used a process known as a technical directive, or a TD. In this case, TD039, which was issued during the Canadian Grand Prix weekend. Initially, what that technical directive sought to do was to allow the FIA to monitor the vertical accelerations of the car and perhaps take action if some of those vertical accelerations were considered to be too extreme. Now, technical directives are a form of rulemaking in Formula One which are generally not discussed in public. They circulate amongst the teams and they just clarify existing regulations. Well, not every single team was happy with the technical directive, but a number of changes are going to come into force during this season. The first impacts of these technical directives, and a new one revised, was issued around the British Grand Prix time, will come into effect at the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa-Francorchamps. Now, at that race, what will happen is the FI will take a very close look at the vertical oscillations, the vertical accelerations of the cars, and take action on any cars that are found to be extreme. But the first thing they really need to do is set a baseline of what an acceptable set of vertical accelerations are. One of the key elements of these revised technical directives is a reinforcement of an existing technical regulation, Article 3.158A. And this draws the team's attention to the flexibility of the plank that's based on the floor of the cars. Each Formula One car is equipped with a wooden composite plank and the flexibility of that plank is tightly regulated. There had been some speculation that a number of teams were playing around with the flexibility in this area and going on beyond the allowed three millimeters of deflection. That will be cracked down on as the season progresses. One of the big changes in next year's technical regulations though will relate to the edges of the floors on every single car and that could have a pretty dramatic effect on the aerodynamic design of next year's chassis and this could change a lot of things for the full season because raising the floor edges is a big disadvantage for some cars. Running the car as low as possible to the ground is what every team is striving to do. That's where you get more downforce and more advantage aerodynamically. Raising the floor edges could really penalise, well, every team, but some more than others. And perhaps for that reason, not every single team is happy with this rule change, but it hasn't been through that World Motorsport Council ratification, so there is still scope that it could change. There are a lot of conversations going on about this one. It's not just physical changes as well. The way the rules are being enforced is going to be modified ever so slightly on top of that. The FIA are going to be introducing new floor deflection tests in scrutineering. Now, not every car will be subjected to this at every single race, but they could be pulled out at random to check that their floor is legal and not flexing too much. And that's something the FIA will have to define in the new regulations, exactly how those flexibility tests will work out. It's probably something we'll have to take a look at later in the season. But there are some other significant physical changes on the cars coming next season as well. And they are also based around the floor of the car in the throat of the diffuser. That's this, the front of it and where it drives that air through. They need to make that shape a little bit bigger, raise it ever so slightly, and again, make that diffuser perhaps a little bit less effective, reduce the overall downforce. It will make the car slower, but in theory, it should reduce that porpoising effect. The FIA will have something of a spy in the cockpit as well. Next season, the FIA will replace the existing vertical acceleration sensors underneath the driver's seat with new, more advanced sensors. And that will allow them to study the vertical accelerations and that oscillation in a lot more detail and give them a lot more clarity over what is acceptable and what is not. 
And with all of these changes, all of these regulations subject to ratification, it is still a little uncertain for the teams over exactly what is going to change in fine detail. So there's lots of engineers in drawing offices all over the world waiting for the final draft of the regulations so they can finalise their wind tunnel models and get to work on winning the 2023 Formula One World Championship.